Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be talking about Ryzen, specifically overclocking, as well as a bit more performance-related stuff, but also focusing a lot on Intel's actual response to it. So that's quite interesting, and we'll get to that in just a second. But first of all, let's talk about Ryzen itself. Now, a lot of you messaged me about this. I'm not joking when I say there were 42 messages waiting for me on Facebook alone. So it's very unfair for me to try and thank one person specifically. So just thank you to all the folks who have messaged me over the past 24 to 48 hours. It means an awful lot to us. Oh, and small aside, I did actually order... Um, our Ryzen hardware, and we have been told it will arrive on March the 2nd. Now, for those of you wondering, we have ordered the 1700X, as well as the Asus Prime X370 Pro. Yes, I have to confess, just for a second, I was like, crap, can't remember the code, can't remember the name for it. But anyway, that has been ordered, um, and hopefully that shall arrive. It is not a review sample. We are paying for this so you can expect an unbiased opinion. And as I said, we'll be testing that out with a whole bunch of stuff. We're kind of trying to figure out the cooler at the moment, but the cooler isn't too big of a deal. Oh, and aside thing number two, I have um, some plans to start messing around with the format of the video a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to do a little bit, bit of webcam stuff. Not loads, but um, I know Amy appears quite often in video, so I figured I should probably get my mug on video as well. So I'm probably going to do it, but mostly for like the longer form videos, because I think it's a bit more interesting than just constant gameplay. But um, we'll try it out. Anyway, I digress. Let's talk about Ryzen. So, um, when it comes to overclocking, Ryzen has a couple of tricks up its sleeve, the first of which is the overclocking tool that we've discussed previously, known as Ryzen Master, but also the X370 Titanium motherboard has a game boost knob, and there are 11 different settings for easy overclocking. We can expect uh, 4.4 gigahertz from Ryzen on air. Now obviously it's quite early to test this up and they're based as I test this and essentially they're stages so basically the further you turn the knob the faster it goes stage 0 to 1 has quite a differential it's 3.6 to 4.1 and then after that you're increasing it by 0.5 giga uh, 0.5 gigahertz so it's 4.2 to 4.25 for example um do remember there have been multiple reports at this point that Ryzen is competing fairly well at higher clock speeds, especially the 1800X, and even the 1700 does manage to go past the 4 GHz stage. So essentially, you're looking at a nice processor, even though it does have that 65 watts TDP. Another thing that's popped up, this comes courtesy of videocards.com, um, some of the very first retail Ryzen units have started to appear on Sysoft website. And with that, we've start getting scores, which is quite nice. There's only a couple of results thus far, and these include the Asus Crosshair 6 Hero, the Gigabyte um, X370, and, well, another Crosshair 6 Hero. That appears to be a pretty popular motherboard. So we'll see how its little brother, the one that I'm picking, is going to be competing. Now, uh, there are a couple of other small things that I want to point out. From what I can understand, a lot of the overclocking results are from essentially review sample kits. So there might be some cherry pick silicon going on here. So I would not go into this expecting your, you know, 1700X or what have you to overclock to like 4.4 gigahertz or 4.6 gigahertz as a guarantee. So basically, let's wait until we've got a larger sample size. And the second thing is, once again, there's not exactly a great number of benchmarks. So, although we are definitely seeing a competitive architecture from AMD, I wouldn't be surprised if in some instances, at the very least, the 6900K, for example, will beat Ryzen. I'm not saying it will, but I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Speaking of Intel, this one is kind of an interesting uh, little return to the past. So, back in 2009, there was a number that Intel 
uh, did not like very much. It was about 1.4 billion. That was for anti-competitive practices. A couple of websites, um, people have actually been messaging me this. So a couple of websites have started to um, report that Intel have been um, adding pressure to certain reviewers. Now, there haven't been names mentioned, but one website, semi-accurate, says, and I quote, Intel PR sent out a last-minute call-us-before-you-write email to most of the press, but not semi-accurate after hours last night. You can infer that they are suddenly really worried about something, end quote. Another website by the name of PC Games N has also dug through AMD's Form K, sorry, 10K report. And basically, in that report, they have said, this, this is AMD themselves, that Intel's market share, margins, and significant financial resources enable it to market its products aggressively, to target our customers and our channel partners with special incentives, and to influence customers who do business with us. These aggressive activities have also put past, resulted in lower unit sales and lower average selling price for many of our products and adversely affected our margins and profitability. So before everyone starts getting pitchforks and poking Intel with it, a couple of things. First of all, this is a lot of hearsay. Um, despite the fact that Charlie over at Semi Accurate does claim that members of the press have received this email, I can say that we haven't but we're not exactly as established as, let's say, Tom's Hardware, Anantech, or what have you, or certainly the more traditional members of the press, which I presume this is the email that went out to, rather than, let's say, YouTubers, but I'm making a presumption on that. It is worth noting that some members of the press have already refuted this and said they haven't personally received anything. However, just because they haven't received it doesn't mean much. Now, obviously, what this could possibly mean is that if you don't play by Intel's rules and you say, my God, you know, Ryzen 7 ruffle stomps Intel, ha, 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 and you did that as a member of the press, uh, Intel could be a little pissed at you as a reviewer and basically take you off the list of sending you hardware. So in short, let's say, you know, the coffee that comes out in six months time or what whatever their review cycle is going to be and you're a reviewer for one of these websites or the entire website gets blacklisted you're going to then have to mosey out and buy those samples worse you're going to be unable to attend press events in other words you're not going to be extended an invitation to go to those press events at least this is how it sounds uh with this threat now obviously it might not be that it could be pretty pretty um pretty relaxed language in other words it's like yeah okay intel um you know we know that amd are putting out a new processor but don't forget that we have been on top for x amount of time i will say in my personal experiences and i would love to hear in the comments and feel free to also message me on facebook or other social media platforms your personal um feelings on this i will say intel have been very aggressive recently when it comes to advertising now there's nothing inherently wrong with that because obviously that's what competitors do when their other competitor is putting out a product right sony did it when you know the uh, xbox um one s came out obviously they stepped up that advertising microsoft did it when the ps4 pro come out and we could all imagine what's going to happen when the scorpio is released and both of them are obviously being a little bit more apprehensive now that, well, Nintendo are releasing the Switch pretty soon. So that's just the natural cycle of things. However, Intel have been very aggressive. Um, and it's marketing a lot on Facebook. It's starting to do a lot of tie-ins with uh, um, Green Man Gaming is definitely one I'm seeing a lot of. That's because I've liked them on Facebook. And there are a couple of others as well in the UK. I have noticed a couple of e-tailers giving quite stiff discounts to Intel CPUs. And, of course, we discussed some other discounts that were going on yesterday. And in some cases, the cuts are actually quite deep, like 80 US dollars, for example, on some of the higher-end processors. That's a lot of money. So, basically, Intel are maybe not officially cutting the prices of their CPUs, but they are starting to offer either deals or short-term discounts for their processors to try to, I wouldn't say scupper the launch, but to try and mitigate the launch as much as possible. And let's be honest, let's say you've got a 6600K right now, 
and you know that your motherboard can flash to like a 7700K and you can get one for like 300 bucks, you might be tempted to do it. So it's going to be quite interesting to see how all of this plays out over the next couple of months, to be totally honest with you. It's also worth noting that AMD's BIOS on release, uh, I, I talked about this at length yesterday with the uh, motherboard, with the motherboard compatibility with various RAM speeds, so check that video out if you need to. But um, basically, Intel went through the same thing with Kaby Lake as well. So actually, some Kaby Lake motherboards, um, we were actually sent a Kaby Lake motherboard, full disclosure, but we couldn't review it properly. There was basically an issue with the board, and essentially one of the um, DIMM slots did not work, so we could not get dual-channel memory. So we had to send it back, and now with uh, Ryzen being released, motherboard vendors aren't really that keen to push Kaby Lake, to be totally honest. So we might review Kaby Lake, we're not 100% yet. But um, anyway, to cut a long story short, we were given um, information, as well as other members of the press, they all know about it as well, the early versions of the BIOS for Kaby Lake were notoriously bad for putting just too much power, too much voltage through the CPU, particularly if one was to utilize auto voltages. And it also wasn't that great for compatibility with DRAM as well. It's just kind of how platforms go on launch. It's like, and I know I've said this a couple of times over, but when I bought um, Sandy Bridge back in the day, I, I bought one of the first boards available, and, you know, it was great. It worked absolutely flawlessly. Unfortunately, just a little bit after launch, well, I'll say a little bit, a couple of months after launch, I got an email through telling me that, by the way, the SATA controller, um, one of the SATA controllers, is probably going to burn out, so you can replace your board if you want. And I could do that at, like, no cost. The problem is, at that point, I'd already built my PC, and I, at the time, I wasn't uh, running RGT, but I was using it for other purposes. I was freelancing, so I couldn't just be like, okay, I'm going to rip my PC apart for a couple of days while I send it back an RMA. I just couldn't do it. So basically, I just kind of bit the bullet, dealt with the fact that I knew the SATA controller was going to burn out, and a couple of years later, it did. And basically, I just bought a PCIe um, SATA controller and plugged it in, and it, uh, good you go. So this is kind of the stuff you deal with when new platforms are released. It just kind of is what it is. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a bit of a shorty today, uh, not super technical, just because I'm currently compiling benchmarks um, for the motherboard for the PC review, just trying to do everything at once before uh, Ryzen is released. So obviously there's just going to be a lot of chaos and it's going to be a bit kind of hit and miss over the next couple of days. But even after Ryzen is released, we do have some other reviews coming up. We've got some memory reviews and I'm working on getting some case reviews and also some cooler reviews and, well, just a lot of other stuff. So, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.